Um, what's the process like for you? Are you able to give us like a brief overview of how you make your wheels? Yeah. So, um, Big Spin Podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. I am Chris, and I am here in Toronto, Canada, with the dude behind. I'm not going to say the brand name yet because we're going to address that. Your favorite fingerboards, favorite wheels. I am here with David. How's it going, Big Doug? I'm doing pretty good, Chris. You How like you that? doing, brother? Yeah, I'm doing pretty perfect. good. I'm happy to be here. Same. Pleasure. Dude, David, where are we right now? We are in Toronto, Canada at the Six Gates headquarters. Love it. Shout Vito, out Vito. Vito the Don here on Danforth. Uh, Love it. Beautiful area. Uncle Vito. Yes, sir. Love it. Um, why are, uh, what are we doing this weekend? What, or what did we do this weekend? Well, we had the Boards by the Beach 4 hosted by uh, Vito. Hosted by Vito and your wheel company. And associated with Pyro, yep. And Black oh. River and all wait, the wait, other. Wait, wait, wait. What did you just say? Associated <laughs> with what? Uh, Pyro. Okay, perfect. We, we got to just segue right into that because... I cannot tell you how many times people will try and correct me on my videos when I say the name Pyro. So just for the record, is it Pyro or Pyro? Um, so just a little like uh, backstory on it. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it comes from the word uh, pirouette. Okay. So when I was thinking of a name for the company, I was thinking of like um, something that rolls or oscillates, but I didn't want something cheesy. Okay. And then um, that just came up, pirouette, and then I was like, it's kind of cool, but yeah. kind of girly. Yeah. Nothing against that. But, yeah, no. And then somehow it just got shortened to pyro. Okay. Which realistically means pyro because it's pirouette. But okay. we were like, let's do pyro. Like, that's, okay. that's how it is. So maybe that's where the confusion comes from. Yeah, because it's basically Because I've both. heard the pirouette thing, so yep. that makes sense. Yep. But the pronunciation for the company is pyro. Pyro. I love it. It's a bad day to be someone who's ever called it pyro. <laughs> I told you. All right. Moving on, Boards on the Beach. Uh, yesterday we had Boards on the Beach 4, yep. which was super sick. I wanted to talk about a quick story that I heard from Boards on the Beach 1 that you won Best Trick. Yeah, I was actually thinking about that uh, last night. I, it's just trippy how I, because like now I can't compete in it, but it was nothing yeah. serious. Just I think I did like a tray flip to board slide or something like that, and everyone just okay. went crazy, and I'm like, I won somehow. That's heavy. <laughs> it was pretty funny. It's heavy. When done correctly, even the simplest tricks are going to be heavy. Yeah, I felt bad, though, because I took, like, the, I think it was Black River Trucks that oh, I won. Dude. And I was like, uh, one of these yeah. like, contestants or, like, someone that showed up could have yeah. won that, you know? It's all right. You had the banger. Yeah. Sometimes you got the banger, sometimes <laughs> you don't. All right, David, uh, obviously, thanks so much for doing this with me. Thanks so much for, you know, being a part of the pod. Um, I want to start at the beginning because all good stories have a beginning, middle, and end. Um, obviously I wanted to talk about young David, then we'll get into the wheels and we'll get into the decks and everything like that. But tell me, David, where are you from? Where'd you grow up? Uh, so I was raised here in Toronto. Um, I grew up in the West end, um, Jane and Weston. Okay. Um, yeah. Canadian through and through. Yep. The six. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I had to say it. I like that. Uh, what were you like growing up as a kid? Were you always into like action sports or um, what's I loved, that look like? I loved hockey growing up as a kid. I really? St I still do. Yeah. And um, skateboarding. Those two, those two things were like my, my go-to. If I wasn't skateboarding, I was playing hockey. Okay. And Makes if I sense. wasn't playing hockey, I was skateboarding. I like that. Yeah. Street skateboarding. Uh, roller, roller hockey, ice hockey, um, even like on your, with your shoes. I like that. Yeah. So street skateboarding in the six. Yeah. I had to. With Drake. With Drake, I wish. <laughs> how many times? How many times have I asked you if you see Drake rolling around in the six? Probably ten to twenty. Yeah, my yeah. bad. That's and, and just to be clear, never you, seen him. Okay, no, no. Okay, just I've seen sure. his house though. You've seen his house, Vito. We still got to do his house. <laughs> still got to do his house. All right, sounds good. Um, and w as far as like getting into skateboarding, right? Um, what is it like? I mean, with the climate so different here in Canada, like you have like months where it's like snowing all crazy. Yep. Um, what's it like then? Like, what do you do when it's super snowing and you want to get a sesh? What, what does a typical person who lives in Toronto, Canada do in those months? I wasn't like a real like hardcore skateboarder. I stopped before I even learned a kickflip, which is one really? of my bucket list things to do. I still got to learn. Kickflip. Yeah, that's pretty sad. But oh, we might have to do that before we leave. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> I can get it today. Yeah, I stopped at like... I'd say eight or nine years old. Okay. Yeah. So if it was like bad weather, like you'd probably go inside and play Xbox back in the day or something like that. I like that. Yeah. Okay. 
Sounds good. Um, first experience with skateboarding. I think Paul everybody Lang. says the exact same thing, but it probably was Tony Hawk's Underground. Really? Yeah. Underground? Yeah. So not even Tony Hawk 1 or 2. Tony Hawk Underground. It's a great game. Yeah, they all are. Honestly, it, it could have been one of those. I, Like I said, it was a long time. I'm 28. Um, okay. I played all of them, but it basically was video games. Okay. And um, then you get your first skateboard. Your oh, homies dude. pull up with a skateboard. Heck yeah. Yeah. No, I like that. Um, was that your first memory of skateboarding, or did you have like relatives or anything like that? Who no, no, nobody in my family is into that. They're all like um, soccer, other soccer. stuff like that. Yeah, dude, that's sick. Yeah, uh, was there a big skate scene in Toronto like growing up? As far as like circle of friends that skated or anything like that? Yeah, we all we all like did the same thing. Whether like if we were skateboarding, we were all skateboarding. If we were playing hockey, we we're all playing hockey. Um, same thing with soccer, all of that basketball. Like we all just it was like a schoolyard or something like that like that yeah okay so everyone just kind of hung out basically i like that yeah do you recall having a favorite uh skateboard company at that time probably birdhouse or flip birdhouse or flip yeah because i, like I had that. a flip flip deck and it was pretty cool i like that my I was mom more, threw it out so heck yeah i was, was more of like a flip zero guy flip zero yeah okay yeah those are my things your mom threw out your board yeah we moved wow. We went on vacation to Cuba and uh, she cleaned out the garage. Yeah. And then when we came back, I was like, where's my skateboard? And that was the last time I ever <laughs> I, saw I it. I love the, yeah. I love the, yeah. Cleaned out the garage. <laughs> How do you toss out a skateboard? Yeah. Like, well, this is trash. That was one of the things she tossed out. There was a lot of other stuff. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Shout out moms. Shout out They're mom. Great. Shout out moms. <laughs> shout out, shout out David's mom. That's awesome. Um, describe your first skateboard. Like, what do you, what do you recall being your first skateboard? What was the graphic? First professional or? Yeah, first professional. No Walmart we'll boards there. we're talking? Well, I could imagine everyone starts with the Walmart yeah. board. Yeah, we've seen a couple them. of them. Yeah, we've seen them broken all over YouTube. Yep. Let's talk about your first pro board, pro, first pro skateboard. First pro board I bought with my own money. Um, Damn. Yeah, just at With a, your own money? Yeah. I like Because my parents were like, I'm not buying that. You get a Walmart board. Oh. Okay. Or another one. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, what, what were they called? Mongoose boards? Or was that only in the States? I think that's like the BMX here. Okay. Mongo. Well, they definitely did BMX in the States, but they also did, yeah, they also did like cheap Walmart I don't know. Boards. We just called them the cheap Walmart boards or the bunk <laughs> berries. Yeah. I like uh, that. First Little pro deck. Trucks. Yep. First pro deck was um, a flip. It was a flip deck with uh, two cigarettes, like kind of crossing over as yeah. a graphic. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the grip tape, but it was pink. Mm -hmm. I got some Spitfires, and I think the trucks I ended up taking from... A Canadian tire board that I had, so it wasn't even Good. like a brand name. It was like a brand name, Frankenstein Pro. I like that. Yeah, but it was sick. Okay. Yeah, sounds sick. When you were skateboarding, was it ever like did it, was it ever just for like to become pro, or was it always just for fun? It was just fun, man. Like learning how to ollie, and like just like cruising around the neighborhood, going to Seven Eleven stuff like that was just awesome. Like you felt free. I like that. Yeah, with yeah. the homies. Heck yeah, it's rolling around town. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Um, you talked about the impact of the original Tony Hawk games. Yep. Um, Tony Hawk 2, I noticed that that's kind of like when uh, tech decks started to like really kind of like pop up everywhere because they were so tightly associated with the game. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about your first experience with tech decks. Ooh, tech decks. Um, I remember having them always on me. Okay. Bringing them to school. Mm -hmm. People trying to steal them. Yeah. Um, basically... Every day after school, I was, like, obsessed with going to Walmart and just picking up a tech deck. Like, can we go to Walmart and grab a new tech deck? Yeah. And that was that kid. Like, just skateboard, yeah. skateboard, skateboard. Yeah. 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 Did it ever occur to you early on, like, that you can do tricks, like, real tricks on a tech deck? Or was that kind of later on in the process? Uh, I think ollies and kickflips were, like, yeah. Like, that's that was the main reason. Like, oh, it's so cool. You can, yeah. like, actually flip it. And, like, it's not just, like, a toy, like a car. You roll yeah. it back and forth. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Sales so a late bloomer there. It, I got into like trade and look cool and stuff like that, but never realized you could. Oh, so you were using them like Mighty Beans. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Crazy bones. I mean, that's cool too, collecting the graphics. Heck yeah. yeah. Heck yeah. See, I appreciate that. Thanks for not making me feel so bad. <laughs> um, who was your go to skater in Tony Hawk? Ooh. Go to character. Bam was in that game, no? Depending on which game. The one that Bam was in. Okay. So Bam, <laughs> yeah, there you go. And then there was like a skeleton character. I don't know. I think he had to lock him or something. So I had okay. that guy, yeah. Okay. I used him because it was pretty badass. All right, the little skeleton dude? Yeah. I like that. I like that. You know, that's probably one of the first times anyone's ever said anyone other than a pro skater. 
You like playing the skeleton? Yeah. I like that. It was just a graphic. Sick, no, uh, I fuck sick, with it. Yeah, it's heavy. Um, do you, do you, were you big on watching a lot of like skateboard videos? Back in the day? Yeah, back in the day. I mean, um, now, I mean, now they're, they still make them obviously, but now it's more like a YouTube drop and stuff like that. But back when like skateboard culture was all about like dropping that video part that people were filming for years for and stuff like that. Were you ever big on that or? I was more into like the mainstream, like uh, Fantasy Factory, uh, Robin Big. Okay. Uh, Ryan Sheckler. Okay. So not necessarily the full on skate DVDs and stuff like that. Not as much as I watch today. Like, okay. Basically every day I'm watching some skate videos. Well, yeah. Cause yeah. now they're just all bootlegged on YouTube. It's Basically. Sick. It's, it's, just watch it's them nice. all in one spot. Yeah. yeah. Heck yeah. I'm Shelby Gorgonzola and our top story tonight is one of unprecedented mayhem. Swarms of weasel rats are savagely looting gourmet cheeses. Thank you, Shelby. We're here at the local tavern. Let's see what some of the residents have to say. Oh, with the cheese, the weasel rat. No one knew what was happening. It came out of nowhere. Somebody do something! How are we gonna have wine night without cheese? Back to you, Shelby. Stay tuned to weaselrat.com slash big spin for the most up-to-date information. I'm Shelby Gorgonzola from the Vermin Emergency Alert System. I'm lactose intolerant. I don't care about any of this. Um, bridging the gap now between skateboarding and fingerboarding, mm -hmm. do you think that it's possible for someone to fully love and appreciate fingerboarding if skateboarding was never really something they were into when they were younger? Yeah, for sure. You think so? Yeah, there's... I like that. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. That's a question I ask everyone, so I'm just curious to see, um, because there's definitely an argument, not so much an argument, but there's definitely a sentiment that if you don't, if you didn't skateboard, that your fingerboarding kind of suffers. Um, I don't know. I'd have to disagree. Okay. Well, no, I, to be honest with you, I agree with you. Cool. I'm just kind of giving you that sentiment because, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of people that kind of... I, I mean, I get the argument on the other side, but it's, yeah. it's all for fun at the end of the day, right? I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what was your first experience with fingerboarding? I know we talked about tech decks a little bit, but uh, when did it kind of... When did, like, pro fingerboarding and, like... And when, was, how, did it, how did that kind of come into play? I was at a homie's house, and I was um, explaining to him about um, like professional fingerboards, Mike Schneider, all that, Black River, shout yeah. out uh, BR. Heck yeah. And uh, he already knew about it too. And like, I was like, oh, so you know about this? He's like, yeah. He's like, but I never got one because it was so expensive. So we, we hopped on uh, the internet and um, we went on like a website, the equivalent of like Craigslist. Okay. Uh, it's a uh, Kijiji here. Kijiji. Yeah, Kijiji. I've heard of that. It's where you buy like used stuff, brand okay. new, just shopping online. And uh, we were looking for Black River setups and uh, we were going to go pick up these two uh, pro sets and then right. that ended up flopping, but we were still like, yo, we need to get some wooden decks and some bearing wheels and yeah. proper trucks. So we ended up ordering from Broken Knuckle. Okay. P rep. Shout and out P rep. Yep. Shout out P rep. Broken Knuckle. That was my okay. first pro wooden. Oh yeah. Same. Yeah. So really? we, we ordered those and they, they came in and then he kind of fell off, but I, I just, kept using it and like, that's where it. the addiction started or Wait, like what year was this this was like 2014 2015 okay yeah so started out with uh with the p rep board yep that's sick yeah a lot of people start there for those of you who don't know p rep sells like pretty like entry level skateboards like or finger boards in this case yeah i think they're still doing it shout out shout out uh p rep yep um let's see tell me about your first pro fingerboard setup what was that like so you're on the hunt for a black river setup mm -hmm. fell through went with the p rep so talk to me about when you finally got your hands on a pro fingerboard setup. Talk to me about the difference. Ooh. My first pro setup was a Candy Jacobs Black River uh, Berlin Wood, I, okay. I think it was. Okay. Um, I li actually live down the street here, and uh, they shipped it to me. It took, like, uh, maybe a month or so. Yeah. And when it, when it came in, I was just like a kid again. Like, I opened it up. I was a little upset that it came complete, and I didn't get to assemble everything. Yeah. But um, it came with the, I'm not sure if I had Winkler wheels or, or, or there, were, there were some speedy bearings. Very nice. Yeah. The grip tape was nice. I liked how it was engraved. Um, mm -hmm. It was awesome. I was, I brought it everywhere. Like yeah. to this day, I don't go anywhere without a fingerboard. Oh yeah. You always yeah. got to keep it on you. Yeah. Keep, keep that tucked. dang on me. Damn. <laughs> I like that. Um, okay. So now, now you're talking about getting the fingerboards and stuff like that mm -hmm. and your fingerboarding. Um, Obviously, you went the route of the wheels, right? Yep. A lot of people kind of start off with, I'm going to make a deck. But it seems like you kind of went the wheel route. What do you think was missing in the wheel sector of fingerboarding that kind of made you think, I can, I can bring something new to the table? Like, I'm going to start a wheel company. What was that process like for you? 
Honestly, I never thought about it like that. I was always a big fan of Joy Cult and Oak. Okay. I got my first two pro sets. Um, I think Oak was my first one. I also lived here down okay. the street on Danforth. Uh huh. And um, yeah, then I ended up getting a set of Joy Colts. And I don't know. I just, I always thought the wheel was fascinating. The whole concept, like mm -hmm. fingerboards, wooden decks. Um, I actually wanted to start a, a deck company before. Really? Yeah. And you just I just wheels. I had no idea how like how do you, where do you get a mold? What do you do? Yeah, there wasn't the community like there is now. Yeah, especially with uh, Instagram and social media. Yeah, it was just like me, on just my own thing. Yeah, doing my thing. I like that. Okay. Um, at what point though did you kind of realize okay this is like I want to do the brand, right? Because because uh, everyone has the idea of like I want to make boards, I want to do this. But what was that first step like? What was the first step in getting Pyro off the ground? I guess when I made my first couple sets, okay, it all goes back to like having a, having a setup with me all the time. Yeah, um, I had the Joy Colts on my deck, and then um, I kind of was just like glancing them, and I'm, I was like, "This is like super cool. Like I I love these wheels. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think a lot of people do, and it's a good brand. I respect it. Um, mm -hmm. The legacy they've they've failed. Yeah, but um, yeah, I, I would have to say it was from inspiration from other companies. Inspiration from other companies. Exactly. It seems like Canada's just killing it with the wheels. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of companies in the States, too. Heck it's yeah. all over. Like It's all over. But international. It, we got Joy Colt. We got yep. Maple. We got Pyro. Sick. Yep. Like that. Canadian wheels. Yep. Joy Colt's from the States, though, right? Now it is. Yeah. yeah. It originated with... Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I just had a brain fart. No, yeah. no. Yeah, yeah. It originated with, with Matt. Yep. Right? Here in uh, good old Canada. Yeah, about an hour away from here. There you go. Shout out, uh, shout out Joy Colt. Yeah, shout out Joy Colt. There you go. Um, walk us through the name Pyro. So I know we talked about the pronunciation, yep. right? But where does the name actually come from? As far as like, I know you talked about like Pirouette, right? Mm -hmm. um, as far as like deciding on that name, were there other names on the table at one point? Like walk us through the process of actually deciding on that name. Were there other names? I mean, there probably was, but I don't think I remember them. Because no. this was like a good three four years ago four years ago maybe, yeah maybe because you, you you launched pyro in what 2020 yep okay so about four years yep and then i was working on it 2019 for about a year just about like year. doing just playing around from the time you you decided to start the company to when you sold your first pair of wheels how long was that about a year about one year yep working on the locked bearing system um quality control yeah. materials that's crazy. Uh, it was just for fun, you know what yeah. I mean? Like for for myself, because like I said, I enjoyed using the Joy Colts yeah. and the Oaks. For many years, making fingerboards has been kind of like this like big, well kept secret, and so it's mind blowing to think like it, a lot of people have trouble figuring out how to make decks and get graphics and stuff. But I can only imagine it's even harder to kind of figure out how to make a fingerboard wheel. Yep. So what were like your when you started out and said I want to make fingerboards wheel? What did you reference or who, who did you take advice from or inspiration from? To, to actually get started physically making wheels. Because it to me, it's like you can't necessarily Google how to make a fingerboard wheel, yep. or at least at that time. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't seem like information that would just be out there. So what would you credit to like helping you out the most? Trial and error, or what do you think? Yeah, probably like just analyzing the wheels that you had at the time, mm -hmm. like inspecting them, measuring them, uh, testing them on different materials, yeah. um, basically obsessing over it, yeah. like just fixating on it and like, trying to recreate something that you love okay. or um, I don't know, maybe improve. Okay. I like that. Yeah. When it comes to, um, when it comes to the wheels, talk to me about the process. It comes to like actually just designing a wheel. Like how do you kind of, I mean, cause you have multiple, and you, it's like you have the performance, yep. you have the mids, the bowls, and mm -hmm. you know, and so some of them kind of seem like the obvious ones, but something more less obvious, like the mini bowl. Yep. Like, how do you kind of, like, brainstorm those ideas for new wheel shapes? Uh, so the mini bowls, just basically like a regular bowl wheel, just shrunken down in scale. Right. So literally just the same measurements, um, dimensions, and all of that, mm -hmm. all of that stuff, just literally shrunken down into, like, a mini, okay. a mini bowl. <laughs> so, you, so you never really know when it's going to hit, right? Uh, or do you kind of already think like this is for sure going to work? This is going to go. Well, well, I'll prototype and I'll test them, and then if if I like them, mm -hmm. I'll send them out to some of the riders and stuff like right. that. And then um, once we get the approval, like yeah, this is good, we we launch it. I like that. Yeah, 
okay. don't think we've had a wheel that we haven't really liked. Yeah. You definitely don't, don't put up stuff you don't like. Yeah. Definitely got to like it. Yeah. Um, talk to me a little bit about, because you just released the uh, Safe's Pro Wheel. Yep. Talk to me a little bit about that design process. Because I feel like, at least from behind the scenes, it felt like it was, what, like a year in the making? Yeah. It was about a year that we... Bunch uh, of prototypes. Bunch of prototypes, a lot of back and forth. Um, yeah. It's also the um, the fact that we live in different uh, countries. Yeah, yeah. So I'd have to mail out the prototypes or send photos and safe would be like, um, we got to tweak this or we got to tweak that or mm-hmm. I, I have a new idea. I want to change this. I want to change that. And I, we just, yeah, we, we took our time with it. You know, we didn't want to yeah. rush anything. And yeah. it was the first pro wheel for the company and he's the first rider on the team. So, oh, really? Yeah, it was, it was an honor to have him and, and to just do the whole thing. It was, it was awesome. I didn't realize he was the first rider. For yeah, he was the first rider. It was um, him, uh, Roland, mm-hmm. who no longer is on the team. I, I don't know what happened to that guy. He, uh, I hope he's doing okay. He just disappeared. No, no fingerboarding anymore. Yeah, just kind of like doesn't doesn't pop around, nothing like that. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully that guy's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as far as for the process in actually making your wheels, because I feel like. With decks, it comes down to obviously the plies, yep. the glue, the the the, uh, the mold, mm-hmm. right? When it comes down to actually making your wheels, um, what's the process like for you? Are you able to give us like a brief overview of how you make your wheels? Yeah. So um, you'd start off with the uh, the measurements, right? The dimensions and right. um, the shape that you're you're trying to go for. Um, I can tell you confidently that all the wheels are made in house. Um, we don't like drop ship or order anything from uh, overseas and stuff like thing. that. Yeah, so everything's made in house. Uh, everything's designed mm-hmm. in house. Um, I put the bearings in the wheels after we uh, manufacture them, um, and then there's the after the post process. Yeah, you know what I mean. Get get your materials sorted, um, packaging, pigments, um, all of that stuff. Heck yeah. Yeah, I'd imagine there's a lot that goes into it. It's like trade secrets. There's there's a couple. Yeah, I I learned all of it on my own. You know, yeah. there wasn't the internet or anything like that. And trial and error is a huge yeah. thing. And it like there's a lot of sleepless nights where you yeah. got bearing issues or um, slipping, uh, yeah. um, just bad material. Um, and even weather, everything plays plays into it. You know, because like yeah. you're, you're working with urethanes, right? And, and yeah. I feel like it's all part of the process, right? Like yep. the whole like failing to get it right. Basically, you know? yeah. And it's just part of the learning process. When you talk about the materials, there's always a question of are these plastic wheels? Are they urethane wheels? Are they resin wheels? How would you describe your wheels? Uh, I would say it's a urethane resin mix. Okay. Yeah, like polyurethanes are all in the same category. Um, it's They're all made of polymers. So it's essentially everything's plastic. Mm-hmm. Urethane, okay. resin, um, they're all, yeah. Okay. If you were to like research it, it's, it's, that's what would pop up. Sounds good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Um, talk to me about the, uh, the recent announcement for Pyro Dex. Yeah. Um, I know we just announced it a couple of days ago. When you started Pyro, obviously it started as a wheel company, but talk to me about like, um, was the idea for it to always be just a wheel company? Was it always meant to be like this big company that sells decks? Um, we do have hardware now, mm-hmm. base plates, yep. all that stuff. Are, so talk to me about that, right? Expanding away from wheels. I mean, like I mentioned earlier, I wanted to do a deck company before I started the wheels. Um, yeah. Just never got to it. Um, so it's always been like the first thing I've wanted to do. I think that's what most people are into. Like, oh, let's, let's make a deck company, graphics, yeah. all that. Um, I've been making decks for about maybe two years, just on the side making my own blanks mm-hmm. session them um i had a low mold we dropped the the decks yesterday like you mentioned mm-hmm. and um fire by the way thank you and we got our team writer jamie who uh, helped designed everything yeah he designed this shirt dude when does that drop uh soon soon uh, next couple of months maybe he designed the shirt you're wearing like uh, very good homie you met him yeah, um, yeah so he helped with like graphics and stuff with, um and yeah just the decks is pretty straightforward. You know, you got your veneer, yeah, glue, yeah. your uh, metal molds, um, plastic molds. I like that. Yeah. Was it always part of the plan, though, to, to expand that way? Like, do you uh, see Pyro as being more than a wheel company? 
Honestly, none of this was a plan, you know? Yeah. At, at one point, it's I... kind of going with yeah, it. Yeah, I guess it's just like a branch in a parallel universe where here I am. I like that. Would yeah. you say Pyro's a brand who's selling Will's decks and other accessories or a Will brand selling decks and other accessories? Hate to get super... I don't really think it... Hate to get super into it yeah, like that, but... I guess a Will brand that sells... Because that's what we started with, right? Okay. Yeah. So that's gonna be the that's gonna be the main thing. Well, yeah, pyro wheels. So it okay. makes it makes sense. I like that. Yeah. Can we expect pyro trucks? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I get it. All right, moving on. Um, are there any pros and cons that you see of keeping the decks under the pyro name? Like, did it ever occur to you to maybe start a deck company with just a new name? I did want to branch off and start um, like an underground deck company but i figured it's a lot of work you know i, di I didn't want to start from scratch again and i don't know maybe fail hmm. something I feel, like that. yeah I feel it. so i just i was like you know what like a lot of people said not to to make decks yeah. which i thought was their opinion they're entitled to it yeah but i just i went through with it because i i was making them yeah it's like why not people like them i would show them around um yeah i like that i like that when it comes to um, when it comes to branding and even packaging, Pyro's always been one of the wheel companies that kind of stand out to me. Even before I wrote for the team, I feel like packaging has always been super on point. Even like the branding, the uh, Cyclops cat is mm -hmm. like I feel like super iconic. Tell me the story behind the uh, the Cyclops cat. So the Cyclops cat was the brainstorm process of needing a logo. Okay. So I love cats. I've always had cats. Um, I still have one today. Really? Yeah. Shout out Bean. Shout out Bean. My baby. Love that. Um, I don't know. I just, I thought it would be neat to have like a cat logo as like a, as a company. So I was sketching and sketching. There's a couple renditions and um, I still have the original like sketch that I did. And then really, yeah. That's so sick. it's the exact logo. That's why it's like all like, um, we need, that needs to go in a fingerboard museum one day. Basically. <laughs> I'll talk to Vito about making that happen. Fingerboard museum. That'd be sick. But that's how it came about. Um, me and my girlfriend um, were, were saying it, it should it should have one eye, you know. Like, let's yeah. make it trippy. Yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, let's let's see, let's see what I can do. And I basically drew that, and we were like, yeah, that's that's it. That's crazy. Yeah. You know, my my first experience with Pyro before I even tried the wheels was seeing the logo. Yep. And I loved it. I mean, me and my wife are both big cat people. Yeah. And I, that was like the first thing I remember seeing and being like, okay. I'm yeah. Try I wheels. get that a lot. A lot of people always see it yeah. on on like the sweater or something. They're like, oh, I love that. I love Thank it. Thank you. You yeah, know? yeah, it means a lot. I like that. It's interesting, yeah. All right, sounds good. Any chance we'll ever see uh, pyro recycled wheels? I know it's kind of like a new thing to like recycle skateboarding wheels. Any chance we'd ever see some recycled wheels or recycled products from pyro? I've been meaning to try it. Honestly, I see a lot of guys doing it, and it just looks like fun. You know, it's a it's a totally different um, material. Yeah. It's like a, a legitimate skateboard wheel, just bored out of a skateboard wheel, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been meaning to give it a go, to be honest. Yeah, maybe one day. I like that. Yeah. Okay. We'll have to wait and see. Um, if by chance you were about to sit down and make one set of wheels, right, mm -hmm. from start to finish, what would that timeline look like? Are we talking full 24 hours? Are we talking two weeks? To make um, just one set of wheels from start to finish. I mean, it's, it's, it's similar to like lathing and stuff like that, where you could get it done in a day. Mm -hmm. um, I like to take my time, you know and uh just perfect the process but um i mean it's possible like the, the recycled wheels you could do and i would assume you'd be able to make a set in a day okay so it's, it's similar like yeah a couple days a couple days packaging depending on like if you have your material if you, yeah if you've got bearings or if you got a weight on them and mm -hmm. but yeah it's it's pretty much like a deck where like you can mold it press it get it all done it. in one day if you're only making one set though um, like what's the timeline on there? Just a ballpark timeline. Yeah, about a couple days. A couple days. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, considering Pyro is relatively new to the game, you know, 2020, um, and you've had so many successful drops and so many new product launches, um, how do you, uh, like, what, what are some tips on how you keep it all straight? Like, how you keep everything really in perspective? How do you not get burned out on, like, creating new products and just, and just uh, essentially, what keeps you motivated? Uh, I would say it'd be people like... Um the wholesalers, you know, the people that keep it alive, keep yeah. keep it going. People like Vito, holding it down, you know, supporting, um, selling, um, Clayton slash Cult. People like that, you know, helping mm -hmm. 
helping the community out. So the collabs, the team writers, the basically everybody in the scene, all the comments, uh, all the positive energy. I like that. You know? Yeah. For someone who's listening that might just be starting out with their own company, whether it's wheels or decks or whatever the case, what is one lesson you learned the hard way about um, having your own company that you want to help them out with some advice so they don't necessarily have to make uh, those tough mistakes? Um, I'd say don't give up. Like you're going to run into, into a lot of walls. There's going to be a lot of fails, uh, sleepless nights. Um, there's no, there's no hiding that or unless you get really lucky, you know, mm -hmm. but you're, you're not going to be on a streak forever, right? You're, you're always going to run into a problem. So just stay positive, mm -hmm. you know, surround yourself with good people. Yeah. And, um, yeah, just don't give up, you know, keep going at it. It's anything's possible. I like that. Right. I like that. Um, you probably get it all the time in the DMs, right? As a brand owner sponsor me oh yeah yeah talk to me about uh the process that goes into you looking for uh new team riders or or essentially sponsoring someone what does that process look like for you uh it's just like scouting it just happens naturally like you'll see somebody usually it's i don't think we've had any team riders hit us up directly and say sponsor me like they might have sent us those messages but we probably had our eye on them already so once you see like some talent and you, you just know, you're like, oh, this, this guy's a good fit for the company or right. this guy's a good shredder or so-and-so. So a random person mm -hmm. just messaging you sponsor me is not the way to go. Um, I mean, I'm, I don't frown upon it. I think it's cool that people are like interested in it. It, it, it's, it's, it makes me feel good. Like, hey, I, I want to ride for you. I want to I wanna rep your company. So keep sending them in, you know, maybe you never know. Maybe there could be somebody that gets sponsored. I like that. Yeah. Be a little fairy tale story. Exactly. I like that. Okay. I like the enthusiasm. <laughs> I like that. Um, talk to me about the pyro team, right? There's a lot of companies that, for whatever reason, don't necessarily embrace having a team. Would you say that having a team is a positive? And if so, I mean, how has a team helped your brand? Yeah, the team's huge. You, you definitely need a team. I would, I would suggest that to most companies. Uh, if you want to just make a name for yourself and, and have them expand the company and just overall yeah you need you need a team i would say yeah yeah i like that um as far as for um in like 2024 with social media being what it is do you feel like a brand uh like a fingerboard brand can successfully grow as big as they essentially want to without essentially being a part of like social media and really digging into it or what's your take on that do you feel like companies can grow without social media in 2024 it would probably be a little difficult yeah we're like word of mouth and stuff like that it's i mean we're in a technology era yeah i think it's a it's a must a necessity yeah would you consider yourself someone who is comfortable creating social media content for the brand uh, or what's that like for I'm you i'm kind of a boomer to be honest like okay i like that yeah my girlfriend runs most of the um the website um okay. shipping and receiving um all the technical stuff and then That's sick yeah, we got some flies in here. About to say, <laughs> these Canadian flies Vito, are crazy. What's going on here? These Canadian flies are crazy. I like them though. I already named them Jake. <laughs> um, so with uh, and I was gonna ask. So Pyro is not. It sounds like it's not just you, right? It sounds like yep. it's you and your girlfriend behind the yeah, scenes. Yeah, me and my girlfriend. She's been That's with sick. me since day one. Uh, we've been together ten years. Uh, I love her. I love that. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Uh, may I ask, not to necessarily like, get into your personal life, but is Pyro your full time gig or is there like another? Uh, I mean, when I started it, I was doing like construction and stuff like that, but um, it's gotten to the point where like, yeah, you have to commit and uh, you put a lot of hours into it. So it, it ends up turning into a full time thing where you do it multiple hours a day. Like there's it, it never stops. I like that. Uh, being a member of the team, it's kind of weird because I already know the answer to this question. But for those who are watching that may not know, um, are we going to get a pyro team video soon? And what's the importance that you think other companies should take from putting out full length videos? Yeah, we are getting a, a pyro full part um, where it's in the works. I um, knew that. Yeah. Um, for the people watching. Yeah. Um, I think it's pretty, pretty, pretty good idea to do that. It's, it's like real skateboarding, right? Like, yeah, heck yeah. Make a montage of footage and uh, showcase your talent, your skills, your products, and just have fun, you know, I like show it. some tricks, teach people tricks, just be positive. I like it. Yeah, it's coming. Okay, here's another one for you. Since you just bought your first pro wheel, mm -hmm. okay, it's obviously in your wheelhouse to turn people pro, essentially like with a pro wheel. 
Um, would you ever consider your, uh, would you ever consider making yourself a pro wheel or in a sense a pro for pyro? Uh, I don't think I would. No, I don't think I'm at that level where I would consider myself pro. I can sh shred do a couple tricks, but um, most of our team riders, yourself even, mm -hmm. I, I would say you guys are appreciate much that. better than me at fingerboarding. But yeah, you rip though. Yeah, give yourself I get down. Yeah, yeah, you get down. I see you with the tray flips. <laughs> I like that. You may, may or may not have gotten me a couple letters this weekend with a <laughs> couple basic trays. They're just easy, though. All right. Thank you. Uh, any chance for uh, any pyro get wall? Well, there you go with the T-shirt. But any chance we're going to see any more pyro merch aside from, like, the stuff you already put out? Maybe pyro obstacles, pyro trucks. Like, any plans for that in the future? Yeah, it's crossed my mind. I've, I've been thinking about it. Uh, maybe down in the future. Uh, definitely more uh, apparel, merch, stuff okay. like that. That's always fun to do you know just make a new t-shirt um, a new design you know and like I said I have a really good homie Jamie who helps me with all of that stuff so I'm honored to have somebody because I, I don't know how to do any of that graphic design I could throw an idea out but to uh, execute it uh, yeah my homie Jamie Malk really good guys they uh they help with a lot of that stuff I like that yeah when it comes to I mean being that pyro's a relatively new wheel mm -hmm. 2020 if you had to essentially sell people on why to try your wheels, why your wheels are, I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't want you to say better. I know you're a pretty humble guy, but um, aside from like, if you wanted to like sell your wheels to have people try, what would be your pitch to them? Why should they, why, why should someone pick up a set of pyro wheels and give them a shot? I mean, once you're ready to get into like the professional fingerboarding scene, um, I wouldn't suggest just try in mind, like just. Getting your first set of pro wheels is it's always fun, right? I remember getting my first set of Oaks. So any, any, pro, any pro wheel company, just it's just an experience, you know, compared to like the CNC, P reps. Yeah. Nothing against them. That's also anything from, the evolution, necessity. Yeah. from the evolution of like a tech deck bearingless wheel yeah. to a pro wheel is just, it's awesome. It's insane. Yeah. It's, I like that. When uh, earlier we talked about materials, right? And a lot of people, and there's always a debate, like whether you want to use plastic wheels or urethane wheels, and that's neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. But when people sometimes hear the word resin, sometimes that can have people feeling, sometimes that can have people feeling like, oh, I don't really want to use resin wheels, just because it's kind of like, not so much unheard of, but it's kind of like, I'm either going to use plastic or urethane. What would you say to someone who says like, I don't want to use pyro because they're resin wheels? Uh, I mean, I, I've heard it. People like plastic. People like urethane. Um, just try it out, you know. Try out different companies and figure out what you like, you know. Because if you haven't tried it, you don't really know, right? It's like food. You, you can be a picky eater, but maybe you end up liking something that you were so against. Or just try it out, you know. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Let's. Uh, okay, so we talked about pyro. We talked about the wheels, the decks. Uh, you know, early early pyro stuff. I want to talk now about you as a fingerboarder aside from pyro well, as we kind of wrap up the interview um do you have any current sponsors myself yeah uh no. as a fingerboarder no I, I always thought that'd be cool to get on like teams and stuff like that yeah. but it i only have like three edits out on my personal okay so i i don't expect anybody to reach out to me and and offer me anything but uh yeah. i always thought it'd be cool like hey maybe a deck company hits me up or yeah now i'm doing decks but um I'm not against it. Like, you know, there's a lot of good brands out there that I, uh, I support and I respect. So that's sick. Having said that, do you have any dream sponsors? Dream sponsors. Um, I mean, black river is really big. That's, that's, that's kind of a flex if you can get on there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Shout we, out black river. <laughs> shout out black river. <laughs> <laughs> Be sick. Um, who are some of your biggest, uh, biggest supporters? Like what's your support system like in your life? Um, my family, my girlfriend, mm -hmm. uh, my cat. Um, shout yeah, out, shout out your cat. Yeah, and then people like Vito and stuff like that. You know, close friends. Uh, Heck yeah. Business relationships. Um, yeah, even in the scene, like fingerboard related, like there's a lot of good people. Mm -hmm. You know, yourself. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad we got to do this and yeah, hang out too, this weekend. Man. Seriously, as we wrap it up, just thank you for being a part of the pod and. Thank you for allowing me to be part of the Thank team. you for having me, man. Thanks for coming down. You and Jake, we, you guys killed it. Heck I know yeah. we, had a good, we had a good weekend. I love it. We're going to go have a good day. So. Heck yeah. yeah. We're after just going to go uh, do some tourist stuff. Yeah. 
hopefully drive by Jake's Dra- <laughs> Jake's crib. Yeah, Jake's crib. <laughs> hopefully drive by Jake's house. Wait, I said it again. Drake's house. There you go. Can you tell I'm always thinking about Jake? <laughs> Trying to cruise by uh, Drake's house. Tell me about your. Tell me about your car. I know you put a lot of love, a lot of love and uh, time and effort into that. Oh yeah, I, I love cars. Um, it's the regular 2010 E90. I like it. You said regular. Yeah, it's it's an old car. You know. Okay. Um, I clean it all the time, detail it, just do little mods and stuff like that. I like that. That's big, my other hobby, yeah. Big car guy? Oh, I love cars. I love that. Uh, what do you do to keep fingerboarding fresh? How do you not get burned out? Uh, learning new tricks is cool. Um, and, and like the products, like now that I'm doing the graphics on the decks, um, I think it's cool to always like have something fresh, literally. Like you look down and it's like, oh yeah, I forgot I made this graphic and like it's wearing cool and like I like this and the wheels, you know, you could change them colors, shapes, all of that, obstacles, like you know, or different settings, like street skating is really fun. You find a spot and you just oh, yeah. hit it. And there you go. Yeah. There you go. And see if you mess up your wheels in the street spot. Just get a new set. I was about to say, go home and look, yeah, <laughs> you probably know a guy who can hook you up with some <laughs> yeah. fresh wheels. Okay. Um, what are you listening to? If you put on the radio right now, what artist, what music are you listening to? Uh, I don't listen to the radio, I'll be honest. Like the drive really? down here, it was like 40 minutes. I was just listening to my exhaust on my car you are a car guy i am a car guy yeah. i like that yeah. not even alone with your thoughts just listen no. to the exhaust <laughs> <laughs> that's wild um what's your go-to flat ground trick in a game of skate um front side flip backside flip um okay nollie flip start up with that and some simple you I'm know about to then, say you have a, you have quite the bag yeah work your way up see what the competitor has up his sleeve you know I like that you're gonna have to work on those front pops i do I like that. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, what's your favorite Taylor Swift song? Oof. I don't really listen to her. Um, I had a girlfriend in high school that loved her off, but. No Taylor Swift now? I, no. Breaking my heart. <laughs> I'm a Swifty. I got to ask. All right. Sounds good. Uh, before we wrap up your interview, we have some questions from the internet, and then we have some hot takes. You cool with that? Let's do it. Let's do it. The way we're going to do the questions from the internet is um, I'm gonna ask you these questions, mm-hmm. and we're looking for relatively shorter answers. So nothing, nothing too long. I feel like you've done a pretty good job about keeping everything real nice and tight. So I'm gonna run, uh, I'm gonna run through some questions, and you just give us your answer. Cool, let's do it. Question number one: Is it safe to eat a pair of pyro wheels? No, yeah. definitely not. Yeah, let's definitely not do that. Not sure why anyone would ask. And it's worth noting that the the question in regards to pyro or pyro was asked probably like seven or eight times. Wow. Yeah. So it's good that we, uh, you know, yep. that we took care of that. All right. Someone says, uh, let's see. Uh, when is Dylan going to be on Pyro? Uh, Dylan from Awful? I assume. Based on who asked the question, I think they're talking about Dylan from Awful. I'd, I would love it if he joined the team, you know. We had a, we had a couple chats about it. Um, He's a good guy, you know. He's got a sick brand. Hell yeah. Uh, shout out Dylan. Yeah, shout out Dylan, man. Shout out Dylan. If you're watching, man, we want you on the team, brother. We want you, bruv. Yeah. Did I say it's that right? It's all love. Yeah, bruv. bruv. Brother. Brother. <laughs> I like that? All yeah. right. Um, let's see. What is your personal favorite pyro wheel? Um, probably, I got like three where I rotate, like the performance, uh, the mids, and recently the tablets. Okay. I like that. Yeah. And, I, and to, before I ask this next question, I showed you outside mm-hmm. just because I didn't want you to think that I was asking to sound like talking myself up or overglazing myself. <laughs> but you saw how many times people asked, are we going to get an FB. Christopher Pro Wheel at some point? Yeah. Okay. That's all we need to know. Yeah. We're working on it. Yeah. Okay. It's in the works. I like that. Someone wants to know why you're the GOAT. No comment. <laughs> no comment. Can't give away the sauce. All right. Uh, when are we gonna get a restock on safe wheels? Um, Slush Colt uh, is getting a, a little stock over Ooh. over there. I, I don't know if I spoiled the surprise, but well, this is gonna come out for at least another two oh, three so weeks. Then, so you're good. Yeah, that's pretty pretty good then. Yeah. And then last question from the internet: um, Are we gonna get more Slush Colt collab wheels in the future? Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, cl- shout out Clayton, man. Shout he's out a Clay. he's a real uh, he's a real dude. He's a real one. Yeah, he's a real bruv. Basically, saying that right? Yeah, in the six, <laughs> bruv. Okay. All right. Here we go. No nuanced questions. So I'm just going to go ahead and give you two words, and you just pick one. Not allowed to give any context on it. Let's do it. And you don't get a pass. 
So you got to answer each one. Only ones you get a pass are shop owners. Cool. So Don Vito, Slush God, they all got a pass. Fair, you get fair. no pass. You pick, just pick and pick. You ready? Yep. Skateboarding, fingerboarding. Skateboarding. Black River Dynamic. Dynamic. Okay. Uh, burritos or tacos? Burritos. Apple or Samsung? Samsung. Tim Hortons or Starbucks? Tim Hortons. Canada or America? I got I to gotta rep Canada. Do your thing, bruv. Yeah. And uh, front side flip, back side flip? Front side flip. Cyclops cats or Cyclops dogs? Definitely cats. I like that. Uh, Drake or Kendrick? Kendrick. Ooh. <laughs> Whoa. Bruv. You said I couldn't say no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like it. Plastic wheels or urethane wheels? Urethane. Making decks or making wheels? Wheels. All right. You ready for this last one? Let's do it. Fuck, Mary kill. Mike Schneider, Don Vito from Six Gator, Slush God, go. Oof. You're putting me on the spot here. That, everyone's Does everybody on the spot. answer this? Everyone's on the spot. Uh, Vito answered. Damn. Um, no Mary. passes. Who are you marrying? Who's wifey? Oof. Slush. Slush? Yeah. Oh, man, Vito. <laughs> The piping ain't looking good. All right. So you're marrying Slush. Yeah. All right. And uh, who we raw dogging? Oof. Oh, that sounds pause. That's, yep. My bad. Uh, no diddy. <laughs> you, you're either piping Mike or you're piping Vito. You're piping someone, dog. Let's do Vito. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're piping out Vito. Yeah. We're oh, running. that means I got to kill Mike? I mean, he... I don't imagine he'd want to watch. I don't take him for the cuck type. Damn. Yeah, so. <laughs> Damn. This is, this is so, a horrible ending. Yeah, this is a horrible ending. You know what, though? You made it through your, uh, you made it through your Big Spin podcast interview. Yeah. David, Yo, thanks, thanks so much. Me, I love it. So yeah. we're killing, just for the record, you're killing Mike. Nah, shout out Mike. Shout out Mike. You know, shout but just for the record, it's like a thing now where yeah. everyone just kills Mike. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, everyone Damn. kills Mike. That's kind of a good thing, though. I can't imagine he'd want to be pipe by you guys. Yeah, I yeah. Can. So, you know, shout out Mike. Shout out Mike. Yeah. But David, seriously, yeah, all man. in all, thanks so much. I love what you're doing with Pyro. I love being a part of the team. I love what you're doing for the scene here in Canada. Thank you. And thank just you. all over in fingerboarding. Thank so you, thank brother. you for letting me be a part of it. Thank you for being on the podcast. Pleasure. And you're the man. Yeah, Where man. can people find you online? Uh, PyroWheels.com. Big Spin Podcast. Thanks so much. Like, comment, subscribe. David from Pyro.